Does this seem familiar to you? If you have a stock focuser, whether on a refractor or a reflector, this is likely to be the case. Let's fix that for free. My telescope is an off-brand version of the Skywatcher 200P, made in the same factory that is Sinter in China, that make most of the scopes for most of the main manufacturers. So my focuser here is basically exactly the same focuser as you'll get on a Skywatcher 200P and many others I believe. Uh, it's a two inch focuser and it's the old style rack and pinion focuser. Um, I'll show you what I mean by that. Whoop. Basically, if I draw the tube out a bit, we can see we got that little strip there with teeth and there's a gear wheel in here that turns it up and down, that's rack and pinion system. The other type is a Crayford, which just works on friction without that strip. But the construction of both um, focuses is very similar. Okay, so you, you can see how that works, bringing the draw tube up and down. Um, this one here, it's for locking. Once you've found your focus, you can Put a bit of tension on the tube and stop it sort of sagging back down. But to actually tension this, we have some little arrangement in here to do so. And I may as well show you that now. So I'll just undo these four screws to remove that plate. a little persuasion okay so that's the cap off and you'll see then there's just this which is a spring and then inside the little gear that contacts the toothed strip simple arrangement and basically all I've done in there is grease that up and then it's all down to making sure you've got the correct tension on this spring that this plate and these four bolts will sort out. Okay, so that's the basics of how this focuser works. Now what you'll all too often find, and this is with many focusers, whether it's a, on a Newtonian or a refractor, if it's the basic one that came supplied on your scope, which is one of the reasons many people upgrade these for astrophotography, you'll find there's a lot of play in this tube, and I've not got any play in there, I can't demonstrate it because I've fixed it, and I'll show you how in a moment. But um, you might be able to pick up on camera, there's some little streaks of grease up here from where I greased it last. Um, inside this tube we've got a couple of nylon strips which have like little lines on them. So this tube grips up against those. But there's a little bit of play and it wasn't quite a tight enough fit and that can induce camera sag and tilt or sensor tilt so what did I do about it okay so at this point I have removed the worm gear from behind and that little plate for adjusting the tension and this enables us then to fully retract the tube and this is where I reveal my fix
simple as that. Basically, we can see the shims I was talking about in there. These are like a nylon thing with small lines, so there's minimum um, contact on the tube for good friction or lack of friction. But because there's not one this end, because of the tensioner, there was room for that little bit of movement. And by cutting out a piece of aluminium can, which is the thinnest piece of metal I could think of, all I've done is cut a big strip out of a can, laid that flat on a piece of old scrap wood, and cut it with a, a craft knife. Because if you use scissors, you will like um, buckle the edges and it might not sit flat. So I've gone for as flat a cut as possible with the craft knife. I've then put the double-sided tape on the back of that and stuck it down real firm. This tension knob now, because it's going up against metal, will still work. Now, there is literally, there's zero flex in this tube now. It fits in beautifully. I know it seems to be getting a bit tight up there with painted as well, but I'm using like that much with the DSLR. And it's a great job. And it was free. All oh, right, beer isn't free, but you drink it. So, you know, the byproduct is free. Um, you'll already see there's a couple of other things I've done here while we're in here and one is I painted the inside of oh sorry where it protrudes into the inside of the tube I painted in a blackboard black paint and that is very matte very dark and it's barely reflective at all so that is good for eliminating any stray light that might bounce off it because it's right up in the top of the telescope. The other thing you'd have noticed is uh oh, oh, that's in the way. No, nope, I've not got the the geared strip in the slot, right? Um, is that I've painted these controls in white because this is black I've painted them white yours may be white so paint them black give it a bit of contrast make it easy to see um, the keen-eyed among you may notice that this looks slightly different at the top and that is because if I unscrew my 1.25 inch eyepiece holder It reveals that I, I just keep this permanently in there. This is a, it's got my oh, it's a Allen key. I can't take it off. My T2 adapter. I keep it permanently attached because I don't use two inch eyepieces. The 1.25 just goes right in there. I've just realized I've now messed up my rotation from my last image, which I was planning to add to. Ah well. That's that with that simple focus affix. This can be done, as I said, on Newtonians and refractors. If you've got that basic rack and pinion system, you may well be able to put a thin strip of aluminium can in yours. Don't cut yourself when you do it. It's not my fault if you do. Let's make that perfectly clear and dispose of the rest of the can very very carefully because it'll cut someone else that's it for this one but i have another thing to show you with a focuser in my next video